In this video, we're going to be looking at the ligament structures in the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. So first looking at the shoulder joint, so we have three bones here. So this bone here is the scapula, looking at the anterior view, meeting up over here with the humerus. So there's the head of the humerus sitting in that glenoid cavity through there. And then coming across here, this is going to be the clavicle. Okay, so we have these three bones that are meeting up. Let me turn it to the other side so you can see the posterior view. I think there's the scapula. There's the spine of the scapula leading into the acromion. So I'm going to take it out of the stand just so we can maneuver this a little bit better. So with the ligaments, when you first see their names, they might look a little intimidating. They're very long, but a lot of them are named for the two bones that they're connecting. So for the first one we're going to look at, is called the coracoacromial ligament. So that's going to be connecting the coracoid process of the scapula with the acromion process through there. So that's this ligament right here. This thinner one that's going across is called the coracoacromial ligament. So it connects those two uh, parts of the bone together. Then we have the coracoclavicular ligament. So going from the coracoid process to the clavicle. And technically, there's two different bands here, but you can just think of them as um, one unit. So these are both called the coracoclavicular ligaments. And then we have the acromioclavicular ligament. So the one that's going from the acromion process to the clavicle. So it's this much wider ligament on top there. So we had coracoacromial, coracoclavicular, and then acromioclavicular. And then the last one to know on the shoulder is called the glenohumeral joint or ligament. So the gleno is talking about the glenoid cavity going to the humerus. So it's this real wide ligament through here. There's a portion here as well as on top here that all makes up the glenohumeral ligament. There's this piece in here, you don't have to know it, but this is a tendon for the bicep muscle. That's what this piece is right through there. So those are the structures to know for the shoulder. Let me get the other model. We're gonna look at the elbow joint. Okay, so the elbow, the bones to know, So we're looking at the other end of the humerus now, the distal end, as it meets up with the ulna and the radius. If you remember on the ulna, we had those two condyles. We had the capitulum, the rounded portion, and then here is the trochlea. So the ulna is gonna be sitting on the trochlea. And then the radius is sitting on that capitulum. And then we had those epicondyles on the outside here. The medial epicondyle was much larger compared to the lateral epicondyle. So that's one way you can know you're looking at the medial side and looking at the ulnar side. So on the radius, there's going to be this unique ligament going around the neck of the radius. So it's going all the way around through there. This is called the annular ligament. You can think annual kind of going full the way uh, around a full year, so going fully around the neck of the radius. So that's what's going to hold the radius on that capitulum. Um, for younger kids, uh, like toddlers, it can be somewhat easy for the radius to slip out of that ligament, and that can be painful because it might be pushing on nerves that are in the area. Uh, but there's a way you can kind of rotate it to be put back into place. But that's why they recommend like not to swing kids between you because that can cause the head of the radius to kind of pop out of that ligament, possibly. So that's one thing to know. So that's the annular ligament. So on the same side as the annular ligament, we're gonna have these ligaments that are on the side, and these are called collateral ligaments. So we're gonna have one on the lateral side with the radius, and then one on the medial side with the ulna. So this one that kind of looks like an A shaped here, this is on the lateral side, so it's called the lateral collateral ligament. Or we can name it for the bone, we could call it the radial collateral ligament. And with these, these um, are commonly referred to with their abbreviations, so you can use that on the practical as well. So you could label this as the LCL for lateral collateral ligament or RCL for radial collateral ligament. So any of those four possibilities would be fine. And then as we turn it around to the other side, so this side in the ulna is the medial collateral ligament or MCL or you could say ulnar collateral ligament or UCL. Okay, you can look for on the lateral side, it's gonna have the radius. So we have the annular ligament, that's not there on the other side. You can also look for the trochlea or the larger medial epicondyle, 
to know you're looking on the medial side. Hey, there's a surgery done called Tommy John surgery. He was the first one to have this procedure done. He's a baseball pitcher. With pitching, as you're using your elbow over and over again, uh, it can be common for this ligament to break down. And so they took some material elsewhere in his body and then used that to repair the medial collateral ligament. That's somewhat common surgery now. Um, that's specifically what that surgery was helping to repair. So we have the MCL or the UCL. It's another way to call that one. All right, so those are the structures to know on the elbow.